Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. For those of you who are new to the channel, a warm welcome to you and if you are returning, an equally warm welcome to you and uh, don't forget to please like, subscribe and share uh, the content with your fellow traders if you enjoy the content that I provide every week and just a quick, I guess, um, uh, overview of what we do at Trading 180 and what I do uh, is really follow a fundamental um, analysis process to establish directional bias and then apply technical analysis, supply and demand strategies uh, to really kind of time uh, trade entries, manage risk and establish profit targets. So um, let's get into the uh, the week ahead and of quite an important week matter of fact. Um, we've got a jobs report which would take the spotlight <clears throat> followed by the worldwide manufacturing and services PMI surveys in eurozone GDP uh, so that's the that's going to be the fourth quarter GDP um, figures which is the first of the uh, for fourth quarter GDP figures and that's usually the most important and inflation numbers right so the reason why GDP and inflation is important because it really kind of uh, signals as to what or it can signal to as to what the central bank may do with interest rates um, or, or quantitative easing uh, or tightening so uh, also central banks in the UK Australia euro area and Brazil will be deciding on monetary policy while while OPEC meeting um, is expected to offer guidance into the production plans from March. So we're going to talk about, um, you know, this, uh, the, the UK and I guess the euro area uh, monetary policy a little bit later on and touch on that. And the earnings season will also be in the spotlight with GM. Yeah, so that's not, nothing, nothing to do with us and Forex. But yeah, so we're uh, going to be potentially a market moving uh, week this week um, and potentially depending on what the central banks say, uh, especially Australia as well, um, uh, you know, uh, it could be the beginning of uh, a certain trend either to the upside or to the downside, depending on obviously the pairs. So let's get into the uh, the technicals and starting off on the US dollar index and the US dollar index from last week. Um, pretty much I was saying this uh, and I said, uh, you know, you really want to be a buyer. Right. I think last week, what, five days ago, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday and uh, Mondays. So you guys would have watched the analysis from here. And I was saying pretty much I want to try and be a buyer if prices pull back. But in the group on Wednesday, in fact, I was saying that, um, you know, prices of the dollar should really go higher. So I didn't no one can predict what price is going to do in the uh, short term but it was just obvious that the dollar had to go higher at some point as we approach uh, the, the the decision really to to uh, to high crates and um, fundamentally again you know it says uh, this is uh, just a bit of a newsletter from bloomberg it says the fed's new steady and nimble playbook and um, again what's priced in now so it's basically um you know, for over four hikes priced in for the year with 30 basis points priced in for uh, into March's FOMC. So we've got the Fed dot plot, which is, um, you know, their forecast and pretty much, you know, pre FOMC and where we were, where we are in uh, um, in in January, I guess. Um, and what's basically been, been priced in by the market. So um, and, you know, the basis points is uh, are here as far as, you know, interest rate percentages. So you know, it's pretty much hiking cycles, right, is what you need to really kind of understand from here. The Fed are looking to hike rates, which is generally positive uh, for a currency. Does that mean it's going to be, you know, every single week, you know, the, uh, the price of the dollar is going to go higher and higher and higher? No. Um, it just means that, you know, they're looking to appreciate their currency to try to uh, stop inflation from uh, getting out of control, right? So uh, what was actually a bit interesting was uh, here as well. So well, the whole article was interesting, but for the moment, traders are starting to speculate the Fed could hike five times this year, which is um, which is even more hawkish in keeping um, with the call of Bloomberg Economics. Goldman Sachs is now sticking with its forecast of a drip feed uh, of four increases. So whether it's four, whether it's five, um, 
the uh, you know it's again the rate hikes are coming as we noted yesterday. Uh, Nomura thinks there will be a fifty basis points uh, salvo in March. Steve Matthews writes here about uh, what it could prompt, such as shock and awe, because inflation is really out of the uh, out of control, and it is getting out of control. It's just you know trending away from their two percent target. So. Um, Regardless of whether you think it's going to be four or five, you know, any pullbacks, as I've been saying for um, a very long time, you can check out, you know, past um, uh, weekly videos. I've been saying buy the dollar, buy the dollar, not necessarily financial advice, but I tell you what I'm doing and uh, you can pretty much see what's been happening. You know, you get a pullback, cool, that's fine, right? Pullbacks have to happen. But generally, you know, the path of least resistance, if you look at the, what the dollar has been doing, um, you know, it's literally been the path of this resistance has been to the upside. So, um, you know, dollar index, again, more pullbacks, right? So where do we go from here? So, again, this is not financial advice, nothing of the sort, but um, I will be looking for either a pullback into that demand zone, whether we'll get it or not is, is, is something different. Um, uh, or if prices do something like this, where you get a pullback and then a new, a new high and then a pullback into that demand zone, right? That's really what what I'm looking for as confluence because we're not necessarily trading the US dollar. We're just uh, looking at the US dollar's overall strength because it's a measure of strength um, uh, again, from the dollar against, for example, the pound, the euro, the yen, right? And, um, and some other currencies. And we're looking at this as confluence uh, to buy, you know, the dollar against the yen, the Swiss franc, for example. Um, so if prices do kind of pull back, create some sort of demand zone, uh, then that's extra confluence to buy the dollar. But just fundamentally, you know, you do want to be a buyer of the dollar. If you're looking at, you know, sell trades, that that large supply zone. And I always tell traders, um, really, you know, there's no point in, you know, trying to sell a currency against, you know, technically when you when you're, you know, you um when fundamentals are and risk sentiment are in play because um, there's no technical analysis level that's going to stand in the way of fundamentals or risk sentiment. So there's no point in trying to make a decision on trading the dollar based off a technical analysis. If you don't know, you know, what what is going on uh, fundamentally, um, then it's just you're, you're, you're really kind of flying blind in that sense. Um, but yeah, so I guess we've got some supply zone from way in 2020. But again, the question is, why it, whatever drove the dollar down um, in 2020 or made it you know depreciate right here is that the same thing that's going to make it depreciate in you know two years later in 2022 I, I highly doubt it. yes there's probably some you know maybe some profit taking going on etc and if you do want to be a you know try to short the dollar and profit taking then you know be my guest this is a this is a level that you might want to look to potentially short right to make money from but for me, it's just literally, uh, you know, buy trades and looking for dollar buys. Not necessarily, on the, like I said, the dollar index, but more to do with uh, dollar uh, other currencies like the dollar yen and dollar um, um, dollar Swiss, for example. And look at that. So I was highlighting, you know, the three levels that prices may want to, um, you know, uh, uh, bounce from, and pretty much, you know. We've we got it right. So last week's analysis is still on here, and these were the, the three levels that we were looking at. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we pretty much saw where prices again. This is Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Mondays. So Sunday, that was Sunday's open, um, and that's when you would have got the analysis of saying that this level was really nice. Again, you can go back and look at the analysis. And uh, again, my bias was to buy the dollar, right? So there we are. Uh, now there is obviously uh, a bit more of a demand zone there. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's just really just pullbacks, right? The path of these resistance is to the upside. Dollar hiking, the, the yen really isn't. In fact, they're way behind the curve. So from that perspective, um, it's just looking for dollar buyers. I don't know where, again, I don't know whether prices will pull back to that 114 area, but if it does, I think that's the first area that you want to look for some sort of buy on the dollar yen. Uh, we do have, in fact, uh, quite a wide zone of supply, um, but the higher level is really where if you're looking for any kind of short trades based off of some sort of risk off sentiment coming into play, then um, then that's really uh, where you want to start to look for potential short trades. But for now, again, um, I think just buying the dollar, going long dollars, is just really waiting for pullbacks for me. So uh, there is an opportunity to short if you want. Um, and not to say that prices can't, you know, 
pull back, but for me, it's just one way trading for me for the for on, on the on the, the dollar yen, um, and that's where I am. Dollar Swiss, pretty much same thing. Um, again, nice uh, nice uh, demand zone last week's analysis still on here. Uh, looking at buy trades, so uh, we do have that level has held. I was kind of expecting prices to come just a bit lower. I really wanted prices to come lower so I could get involved in that trade. And wasn't able to get involved in that move higher, unfortunately. Uh, so can't catch them all, but uh, as long as you get the direction right, and that's really the main thing, because when you do catch them, uh, you've got the uh, uh, you've got the um, Sorry, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you're, you're doing it consistently, right? You're, you're literally picking directions consistently, which is what we do at Trading 180. So uh, where are we now? From a sell trade perspective, um, if you're looking at buying the Swiss franc and selling the dollar, of course, we, we haven't quite come up into that supply zone just yet, so that's not really a sell. And from a demand zone perspective, the nearest demand zone if, if prices come all the way back down here. So again, I think if we get you know bearish candle, higher highs, and then a pullback into that zone would be, you know, the probably the um, the, the trade to take from a daily uh, time frame perspective. Again, you can always try to look for short trades up here. Um, for me, why would you want to? But uh, there is a, a higher supply zone also as well that we've got to zoom out and have a look at just uh, from a profit-taking perspective. And just also remember that the more times the level is touched, level, level, the weaker it becomes because if it got stronger, then prices would pretty much go nowhere, right? They would be they would forever remain trapped within a range, right? So um, it doesn't make any sense for, for 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 prices to keep touching levels and getting stronger. So um, from that perspective, this is probably more likely to break. Um, again, from a Swiss franc perspective, there's no reason really to buy the Swiss franc if we're not, if there's no real kind of risk off um, that's going to take. Uh, um, that's going to the market's going to care about. Yes, we've got you know Russia and and Ukraine, which is a definitely a risk off event, and that could cause prices to go lower. But that just you know pushes prices to where you want to really be a buyer of the dollar once that um, situation is resolved, because it will get resolved at some point. Dollar CAD and the dollar CAD again. Um, dollar CAD, you got two. You really got kind of two um, uh, 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 pairs that are that are. You know, uh, it's strong in a sense of their both their central banks are hiking rates. So this is a harder trade, you know, from a divergence perspective. Um, again, I think the uh, the Canadian dollar not hiking rates uh, this or last week. Um, there was a bit of a shock. I think the market expected the the, the Canadian dollar to hike rates, and they didn't. So um, and whereas you know the uh, the um, the Fed pretty much of you know really hawkish so you're seeing that kind of play out in the market uh there is a bit of a supply zone yeah I'll draw it from here supply zone there and another supply zone up top and again just something interesting in case you've seen it that this level's been touched several times so what could happen is in fact that level right there yeah could actually be um tested and potentially stop hunted for those of you who are in the, um, the private members discord group you could get a manipulation around here and then you know to the downside so that is very very interesting not a pair I'm looking at to be fair but I do like the technical setup really like that but if you do like the uh, any of these supply zones to get short and want to buy the Canadian dollar over the uh, US dollar then you know be my guess that's where you are if you want to be a buyer of the US dollar then that's going to be the first area to look for long trades uh, looking at the pound and the pound again uh, has come off um, this area here and uh, uh, really kind of again cutting um, through I guess that demand zone and demand zones again this is this was a harder trade to figure out fundamentally because you've got again two central banks that are looking to you know hike rates right the Bank of England are hiking rates as well as the uh, Federal Reserve so um, from that perspective in fact let me not delete that from that perspective um, it's difficult to say which one you should be buying or selling. For me, um, 
I think they really the uh, the trade could have gone either way, but with the Fed being you know really hawkish um, at the moment and the pound uh, being you know fairly hawkish or maybe you know I would say there's decisions to be made. I think um, again from last week, not a pair that I'm interested in, but you know the path of these resistance probably was going to be more slightly to the downside. But looking at the um, uh, the central banks and what they're really looking to do. Uh, so Europe's uh, big two uh, deep and split on inflation response. So you've got the UK, Brazil, Czech central banks to hike and ECB to hold policy. So there's a divergence there, right? You've got uh, the Bank of England hawks and doves. Uh, generally, you know, the, the monetary policy uh, committee members are hawkish. They're, they're more, you know, content on a, or say content, but they're looking to hike rates right so ease hold hike uh, or tighten and uh, this really is you know what what, what the, uh, the the vote is probably likely to be right um, because again they have to kind of tame inflation so um, from a buying perspective of the pound the pound is definitely a buy against the dollar um, I wouldn't necessarily trade this pair against the dollar but uh, you've got um, you know from a technical analysis perspective I think there's a decent demand zone there to potentially take advantage of um i'll delete that so really if you're looking to buy the the pound i would say waiting for price to come down into that zone there zoom out a little bit that level's been probably been touched several times so it might be open for a manipulation below that before going higher um or if you're looking for a buy on the dollar um against the pound really a pull back into these zones to look for uh, sell trades but either way i don't really have a bias on this because I'm not really trading it. Uh, Euro dollar though I am and um, again many of the guys made um, you know a really nice uh, uh, profit in the group. Um, we were pretty much predicting this again you can look at last week's um, analysis we were literally just saying you know sell um, sell euros and, and buy dollars right we've been saying that again you can check the track record you can check the uh, the, 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 um, the videos in the YouTube channels and go back all the Sundays and I've been saying you know sell euro buy dollars sell euro buy dollars sell euro buy dollars and uh, it's no surprise to see pretty much what's been happening right so uh, with that being said we've got um, uh, you know that, that demand zone is broken and again just to sound like a broken record but there's no technical analysis that's going to stand in the way of fundamentals of risk sentiment none there's no supply zone demand zone there's no support there's no resistance because price doesn't move based off of you know support and resistance and and supply and demand in a sense in the way that is typically taught yes it moves off supply and demand um but fundamentally is what you need to understand from a supply and demand perspective not technicals are, are, are not going to tell you the whole picture All right um, but I think this is a really nice level. It's 113.10. If prices pull back to that zone there, very, very nice for a potential sell trade if it could come back up to that area. Um, uh, but if you do want to be a buyer, I don't think there's any really zone that I would want to be a buyer at on the, on the euro. Of course, prices could you know come up based off of you know what the European Central Bank say uh, this week. But I think overall, um, if you're looking at you know just Europe in general, um, not this. Was, which one was it? So yeah, so inflation outlook um, for the for Europe. No reason for the European Central Bank to change track. Uh, Simca says so. This is uh, basically um, one of the uh, European Central Bank um, governing council members. I think uh, says that the European Central Bank has no need to fundamentally change its assessment on the inflation outlook or, outlook or accelerate policy tightening, right? So there's no need to accelerate um, or even entertain hiking, um, you know, with the European Central Bank. Also as well, you've got Germany slashes growth forecast as virus surge slows rebounds. The government cuts 20, 2022 growth forecast to 3.6 from 4.1. Um, so in, this, in the short term, at least, it's um it's difficult to kind of justify the for the European Central Bank to kind of justify why they should be um you know uh, hiking rates or appreciating their currency. There is going to be a time for it for sure, but for now in the short term, I think um, the euro dollar is still a sell, right? Um, so any pullbacks doesn't mean that you know I'm going to be a buyer. Doesn't really matter. I'm just looking for short trades until um 
uh, you know, the divergence basically gap closes and they, I guess they more converge as central banks. Um, moving forward to the Australian dollar, US dollar. And again, with the, uh, with the US dollar um, hiking rates in March and uh, the uh, Australian dollar really kind of standing still on rates, although the expectation for the, for the Australian dollar is actually potentially this this week um, they could actually uh, start to quantitative tightening or or reduce their quantitative easing if they do that right or, or basically end their quantitative easing uh, program and if they do that I think actually the Australian dollar is a buyer so it's come down to a really really nice area technically but again for me. I wouldn't necessarily buy the Australian dollar against another strong currency. I would buy the Australian dollar against a weak currency, like for example the uh, the, Austra um, the yen or the Swiss franc, for example. So, or even the euro. So, um, so from that perspective, you've got to you know pick your pairs wisely. But nice technically, I do like that zone. But just from a fundamental perspective, I'm not interested in this pair whatsoever. Um, so, various supply zones. Um, Depending on what happens with the uh, Australian dollar, that's a buy uh, as far as the, you know the ECB meet ECB sorry the RBA meeting, or the uh, or there might be a sell trade here, which is decent for a uh, yeah for a sell trade if you're buying the US dollar. And finally, gold. So gold um, sold off. Uh, I was talking to a trader about this on the uh, I think on Friday, and um, yeah, prices pretty much came up to this nice uh, supply zone. And they're pretty much pinpoint sold off. People might be saying, well, why did it sell off? Why did it sell off? Well, um, you've got a hawkish Fed, um, uh, you know, came out this week and pretty much said that they're looking to hike um, more, right? And you always always have to remember that. I'm not saying that, you know, gold is a sell, right? There is obviously, you know, times that maybe you want to sell gold or maybe sometimes you want to buy gold. But the point is, is that... Um, you've got to understand that there's a divergence between um first of all risk sentiment isn't as strong yes again i've mentioned russia and ukraine but from the perspective of the the, the us dollar and and the economy growing as well so the the the, the economy grew this week was actually better than ex, uh, forecasted for the us dollar um which indicates more hikes so for holding the dollar, you're going to get a return if they're hiking from 0 0.25 to potentially 0 0.5 or even potentially even um, 0 0.75. Um, they could hike two in one in one go. Then um, why would anyone want to hold gold when they can hold the dollar and get you know some return on that? Right. So, yes, I understand gold is a hedge against inflation, but if interest rate hikes start to bring inflation down, then obviously the, the, then gold um, becomes uh, devalued because um, of the fact that, um, you know, the dollar is getting stronger uh, due to, you know, inflation coming down or it's starting to appreciate, which then would have that negative effect of gold uh, coming down. Right. So, um, again, not necessarily something that I'm trading or interested in, but uh, there are obviously opportunities. I think this is probably the zone now to look for potential buyers. If you're looking at buyers, for me, um, again, it's a difficult one because you've got you know dollar, you've got dollar strength coming in, but then you've got the gold bug, you know bugs who who are saying that you know inflation, regardless of what they've um, uh, Fed do, may not be enough. And I think if if gold would be a buyer, for example, the Fed hike rates, right? And for example, if they, if they hike rates, but yet uh, uh, inflation still starts to go up as well, then I think gold is going to be a big buy. But for now, with the rumor circulating and pretty much all but priced in um, that the Fed are going to hike rates, gold may start to still, you know, tail off. But let's see. Um, but these are the areas really that you want to look for buy trades or if prices pull back any sell trades in there. So. Uh, that brings us to the end of the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you uh, uh, liked the video again, please don't forget to uh, press that like button and uh, subscribe and uh, comment. They're always uh, your comments are always uh, appreciated. And uh, guys, take care until the next video. Have a great trading week.